Hey guys, this is Joe with Youngblood Family Farm. And uh, it's kind of a response video to uh, Mike Pratt and the Pratt Family Homestead. Um, as you guys know, I'm a shop teacher by day and a homesteader dad by evening. Um, and so Mike has a small car hoist in his uh, shop. And uh, so I was going to talk about my air over hydraulic lifts that I have in my shop here. Um, if you came over from Pratt family, um, hit the subscribe button. I could really use some subscriptions. And if you haven't been to the Pratt family homestead, click on their uh, icon and go over and subscribe to them too. They, they're, they're full of fun and knowledge. So I'm going to do my best. I'm a single man show here. And so I'm going to just try to do this as uh, quickly and efficiently as possible. So I'm gonna put you on a tripod and show you the, the controls that we have here. So the controls that we have coming out of the wall is, is right up here I have an air valve that I've got to turn on before I do any lifting. Um, and that, that's, that's supplied from my main compressor. And then back here, it goes through an air filter just to kind of get out any excess moisture and condensation that could be developed. Um, the next piece is, is, is kind of overkill, but it's, it pressurizes the system and then it will depressurize the system. Now Mike has, has two pipes going into the ground. I'm guessing one is for send and one is for return unless he had a, a two system time or, or two cylinders at one time. But this, all it is is a canister that kind of deflects the air. That's pretty much all it is so that you don't end up with a, uh, a shot of air and Mike's come straight out of the wall. It'd probably be good to downturn that so it doesn't blow any air into anybody's face eventually. Um, and so once I pressurize the system, I pull this lever forward and it will begin raising the cylinder. If I want to go down, I have to depressurize the system and then I can release the pressure. And it goes down nice and slowly. Now, I'm pretty certain that these are just, these two pipes are just air but you, you can't really quote me on that because I, I honestly, I'm not the mechanic um, that certifies these. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn the camera around real quick and just show you the cylinder lifting. Once again, I have to pressurize. I have to pressurize this one. And then this lever here, I have to pull out to then uh, send the pressure to the cylinder. Um, I'm covered with quite a bit of, of plating here. So my plating is not, my piping is not underneath the, uh, it's not underneath the concrete like, like Mike says. Um, and so I'm just gonna have you down there. I'm gonna go ahead and pressurize it so you can see it lifting. Quite a distance from the camera right now, so I'm going to try speaking up. But what you see there is is basically a pretty big structure, Mike. Lift you up here a little bit. It's a pretty big structure, however, it's only it's only one cylinder, and you can see that it's it's held on on top with a about six or eight big lag lag screws going into that cylinder. And then once the cylinder goes up, that's about as high as it goes. Um, these, these arms and turntables are probably just shy of six feet. And then in this little hole, oh, in this little hole, there is this safety bar and there's a little tab that flips down and it's supposed to be a safety catch at full height. However, you could see that this little pull tab, 
It doesn't always work. I don't use this with my students anymore unless we're in a real pinch to do maybe a tire rotation, something where the kids are not actually going underneath the vehicle. Um, and so that's pretty much it. If I want to take it down, kind of have to do the same setup again. Depressurize the system. And I can see some water kind of condensating out of that line. And then I have to pull the tab. And without a vehicle on it, boy, it takes a good while to creep down. So Mike, this is the other lift that I was talking about. And what this is, this is an old, 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 old school um, lift. I pulled the cover plate back. This has one compressed air line that comes in. And uh, my air filter leaks pretty good here, but you got one compressed line that comes in, a air filter that goes through, and it snakes along, goes down into the ground. And then you can see I'll take it nice and close here. We'll see if the, the camera will behave itself. And you can see that that line comes in right here. It has the same kind of blow off canister, if you will. And then it circles around and goes into this mixer here. Um, and so how this lift worked was, this was for old, old vehicles and this front cylinder would slide up and down this metal plate uh, per your vehicle's wheelbase, if you will. And then I've got a, uh, a small engine dyno here that you can see the back plate and I've got wood blocks underneath there so it won't lift ever again. I took the mechanisms out of that one. And so what we did was I had quite a few students that would bring dirt bikes and snowmobiles in and we decided to build lift table. And from time to time, this is what I was talking about, Mike, where we actually mounted this, it's, it's close to an eight foot long steel table. And we mounted this down, uh, built some iron structure underneath it. And, and so I'm gonna see if I can't lift this for you. Um, without showing you my junkyard there, uh, when you're working around small engines, it's pretty fun to have all sorts of parts available to you. So, so what I have here is once again, I have these plates and these guys used to go on top of this plate over here and I take them away so I don't end up losing them, um, losing them in, a, in the crowd, so to speak. So I have to pressurize the system and then I can raise this table nice and slow. And like I said, this, this thing, So, so you'll like this. So I, I keep trying to uh, operate this and I have one issue after the other. So I am, I'm just going to kind of walk through it really quick. I don't use these very often anymore, um, but at the time it was an absolutely awesome system to have. And I guess now I'm gonna have to poke around and see if I can't fix it. But once again, Mike, we have, uh, we have this, this air entrance and a blow off down here. Um, we have these two mixing valves. One would go to the rear, one would go to the front cylinder. And as I activated the front cylinder, you can see that <laughs> it looks like that top seal blue. And so uh, that might be your issue too. I, it's, been, it's been probably two years since we lifted this thing. And as you can see, um, that might be your issue. So I've got a little bit of cleanup here. Um, I've got to, once again, play the same game that the Pratt Family Homestead's doing is, is it worth, is it worth the repair for as many times as you use it? Um, it is, it is clearly a, uh, a water and oil mix that I'm, I'm spelling out here. Um, love to poke down underneath and have you guys look at what's there but boy you can't see anything so um, apologize um, like Mike says you watch a train wreck so it's it is what it is um, but that's that's what you have there Mike so my suggestion would be a, a very simple way 
to, to, to test and see if it lifts. I don't think that you need mixing valves. I think you need um, possibly just a, a small valve that will take some air pressure or maybe even a, uh, a, a regular uh, 90 degree ball valve, um, something to hook your air compressor up with. Uh, you probably want a ball valve on both sides so that you can uh, hold the pressure in and then release the pressure. This is a small mechanism that I used to have on a old alignment rack and it is made by the Wilkerson company. Not really sure what it's called. Someone smarter than me could probably tell you, but what it does is it, it limits the pressure. Um, and so I'm sure that this is set at maybe like 120 pounds or, or whatnot. So it will hold the pressure and then everything right there by my pinky, it kind of blows off the excess pressure. So you're not continuing to push in the pressure against that cylinder. Um, that's what I have. Um, I hope I hope this is helpful in some way, shape or form. And like I, I said earlier, um, sorry about the, the, the seal failure, but uh, I guess that's what that's what happens. That's good. Um, I could fix that now. So um, subscribe if you if you enjoyed this. Go over to the Pratt family and subscribe there. Uh, let's keep helping each other out a little bit and uh, let's not laugh too hard at each other's failings. All right. So have a great day. Enjoy your weekend. Um, and you better get ready for syrup season because it's coming. Bye now.